welcome to episode 14 of the Ice Sphere. It's lovely to have all you. Um, I don't know about you, but it's been a quiet week for me. How about you? Hi. <laughs> uh, no, no. <laughs> no, no. Nothing really happening? No. Yeah, nothing Nothing significant happened. Um, I was actually thinking, I, I have... I have milk in my fridge that has so far seen uh, two prime ministers and two monarchs, <laughs> um, <laughs> which, uh, yeah, it's, it's quite, so we had, what, Liz Truss becoming prime minister, what, Monday, Tuesday? And Monday, then, Tuesday, yeah. <clears throat> and then we've, uh, obviously on, was it, thir- it was Thursday that uh, the Queen passed away, which has um, been... Interesting here. I'm kind of curious, uh, and it's obviously a discussion we can start on. Um, how is it received in America? Because obviously, like I'm, I'm, a, I'm in Ground Zero. She died in Scotland. Um, what's it, what's it like in the U.S. and how's the U.S. Um, media like covering it? I don't watch a lot of mainstream U.S. Uh, news, but I have been watching it just for the purposes of the stream coming up. But um. I, it was strange to me because they switched into black tie and black black attire and everything else. Okay. And um, and they also lowered the flag, which is okay. insane. They don't lower the flag for, you know, it, it it's the equivalent of um when she when, uh, dear Lizzie lowered the flag for JFK back in the day when when he was assassinated. So it's it's kind of strange to see that there is that kind of, um, sense of mourning. But there was, um, interestingly, there were some newscasters over here. It was on, I think it was CBC. She looked as though she'd been crying as the news was breaking. And I'm going, you guys fought a war to get away from this. Why, <laughs> Why are you so invested in this? But it's 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 the cult of the monarchy, the way I see it. Um, but yeah, it was a weird kind of... I've had people offering me their condolences. Oh. As if it's a personal relative that's died. And it's like, I know... Um, but there was one person who was like, well, isn't she like the grandmother of the nation? And I'm like, mm. in propaganda, maybe, mm. but like not on a personal level. So that was a weird one, having people literally just being like, I'm so sorry for your loss. And I'm like, did, did someone I know die? Uh, uh, you know, yeah. like, <laughs> something happened? Do you know something I don't? But it, no, it was just about yeah, the queen passing. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, the, the news here has not been as saturated with it. I have been keeping an eye on um, BBC and ITV and everything else, and it just looks like a complete media blackout. I mean, I don't know if you're aware of anything else that's happening in the rest of the world right now. No. Um, just because everything is the royal family. Um, I've honestly seen most of my stuff from social media. I have not seen too much of over here. Um, PBS, which is the public funded, um, you know, that kind of thing. It's kind of like the BBC, but not quite. They've been doing a lot of that, and also Hulu had a uh, you know, tribute to the monarchy or whatever, but it's easily for me to avoid. Um, whereas cool. in the UK, it seems to be every channel you can't get away from it, which is, um, yeah. That's, well, I'd say uh, that's pretty much been the kind of like experience here. Uh, like it's basically been balls to the wall coverage of of yeah. it. Um, to the point of insanity, might I add, like. Don't get me wrong, I understand that everyone, um, you know, there'll be, like, government institutions and things like that wanting to do it. But uh, for anyone who's been looking at my Tumblr, there is some pretty wild, like, tributes being, like, posted. Like, you know, it's like Domino's Pizza doing it. Yeah. Uh, it's it's I, Anne, it, it's, it Anne, I mean, the, the, the worst one was Anne Summers. Like, Anne Summers had this big banner at the top of their website that was like, I didn't Queen, see that one. Queen Elizabeth, um, you know, like, the, the it was 1925 um, to, to 2022. And then underneath it, it was like lingerie, toys, like, you know, clothing. Like, you know, it was just the juxtaposition and then like there was a there was like in mcdonald's the touch screens that you do the orders on like some of them were like blacked out and had a uh, the queen on them with the you know, again the date and the remembrance um there's buses that are printing off massive receipts because it's adding it's adding a paragraph about like we joined the nation in mourning like the the queen um, there's actually a shop across from me that has swapped out 
every single mannequin in the window dressed dress them up in like black tie they have like a cardboard cutout of queen elizabeth in the window it's it's pretty strange and i think i got a, yeah i got a full statement from marks and spencers because i i still use marks and sparks to order flowers for like my mum's birthday yeah and stuff like that and i got like a full-on like a4 letter of like how we are handling the the queen's passing from marks and spencers and i'm like yeah. i don't care i You're think a business i'm not going to you for a moral i you know for a statement about monarchy i don't yeah. care and like I, I, I do kind of get that um, for most businesses, this is like a. It's the equivalent of Pride Month, you know. They they jump on it, they change their logo, and that's you know that's them marketing to a specific group. And obviously, they'll they'll be thinking, okay, the majority of the UK are pro monarchy, or they feel something towards the Queen, so we'll just kind of piggyback onto that. Like one of the problems that I kind of have with it is like we're just we're now just being told that we're we're mourning even if mm-hmm. we're even if we're not and i think there's like there's quite a lot of that um kind of like monarchy soft power like you would think you know when the monarchy uh, changes you think that's maybe the time to actually discuss changes and you know is the monarchy something that we still want to have or should the monarchy still operate the same way it does? And we can talk about, you know, like the Prince of Wales and that title in a wee bit. Um, but like, there's this kind of um, you're not you're not showing respect if you want to have any sort of discussion like that. And by the time that that national mourning period's over, the time to discuss it's also gone because everything's already been done. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, to be honest, it's it's just been like I think. Like, the BBC basically swapped all of their programming to just basically repeating the kind of message and getting the analysis of the the Queen's life. We had, like, the Queen's life in pictures and, like, all of the articles started to just, like, fire up everywhere. Um, I think it was only Channel 4 that had... uh, They they had a rerun of um, the Big Bang Theory show and they were not changing that. So it was, like, the only channel where you could watch anything else was Channel Never 4 thought I'd say Big this, Bang thank Theory. God for the Big Bang. <laughs> yeah, I know. It was just so it's it's weird because I think I don't want to say I'm like I'm feeling a wee bit sheltered from it, like in Scotland, but like a good example was today was the, the proclamation um of a oh, yeah. of King Charles um in Edinburgh and the Queen's body's now been moved to Holyrood uh, Palace and a uh, so they fired the one o'clock gun and they had all that and there was some really bad uh, trumpet playing um, and we had this guy basically announcing, you know, God save the king. Um, and the BBC were covering it and, uh, like, again, I posted the photo on, or the video of it on Tumblr, but it's like, you can hear audible booing on the BBC coverage and it, it's, it starts before it gets swamped, like, swamped by, like, the trumpet playing and all the rest. But you, you, like, you hear a very, very clear like booing and there was you know there was a couple of people who've been arrested um for for effectively protesting uh, the proclamation um the police have been pretty heavy-handed when it's come to stuff like that um and there seems to be a kind of split you've got obviously people in edinburgh who turned out to the you know to watch the the queen's um hearse is a hearse um, it's I don't a hearse know. and it, it's a hearse and it will soon be a train, which is yeah, another tra- thing yeah. to talk about. But um, it, it's weird to me because I, I literally heard um, I, I was on my friend's social media. My friend is in uh, London, and she was recording stuff that was happening, and you can literally hear them shouting "guillotine, guillotine" in the streets, <laughs> whilst the BBC news reporter is going and they honoured so and so, blah blah, like yeah. trying to talk over them, but you could hear people in the streets, you know, shouting "guillotine, guillotine," and I'm going, "Yeah, I th- this whole we're in national mourning and everyone is weeping thing isn't really <laughs> yeah. social media." <laughs> not really working so well for you right now <laughs> no i mean i think that's a you know there's it's weird because there's like there's narrative about the royal family at this time as well and of course you know you've seen the likes of prince andrew um you know who mm-hmm. <laughs> who we can we can skirt over um well 
So we don't um, want to get the channel struck off, yeah. Yeah, and uh, like you know, there's been obviously a lot of a lot of uh, analysis of you know like Harry and Meghan and uh, Kate and Will and all this kind of stuff. I did notice that obviously the British media are massively racist, so they hate Meghan. Um, yeah. they, they hate Meghan Markle with a passion. Um, and they're always looking for an inroad to um, see that she's not proper and she's not dignified and you know she can't like she can't represent the royal family or anything. And I noticed that one of the um, one of the journalists who were covering it talked about how um, the Will and Kate. Um, so like Will, Kate, Harry and Meghan all came out to um, you know, to get photos at the front of Balmoral and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But but only but only Will and Kate stayed to greet members of the public. And of course that was immediately disproved by social media. Of course Meghan Markle was fucking there. Like in fact she was actually hugged over the fence. And to be honest, like as much as I don't like the the monarchy as like an as a as a thing, I actually entirely support Harry and Meghan in their bid to get away from it. I kinda wish Harry had done it yeah. a bit sooner, to be honest but um i think it's how when you also consider he's leaving what is essentially an abusive situation yeah from from what we've heard about families and then you also have the media circus that surrounds that family so i can understand it taking him a long time to find the the, just the The, mental fortitude to get away from it yeah um and it's it's wild to me to see how he's you know they get treated in the media as like oh it's this it's you know it's whatever it's wallace simpson all over again it's like no it's really not you yeah. know it's not the same ballpark at all this is someone leaving because the harassment his wife is facing because she's black yeah. you know that's that's it it's nothing to do with you know it's not this it's not in the same ballpark at all but it's the the british media is desperate to control every aspect of it and again, social media is just scuppering all of it, which I love because they don't have the control they had the last time this happened. Yeah. They can't do they can't do the same sort of media blackout that happened when, you know, Edward was having an affair with a married woman and the, the UK people did not know about it, but it was all over the US press because the UK had a ban on their media talking about it. They can't yeah. do that anymore because of social media. Um, yeah i mean that's their bunny made quite a good point so it was it was a little girl i think actually i think like the last he was about 14 or something like that mm-hmm. and she hugged megan specifically to show her that she was welcome and it's like you've got a 14 year old who's like really well aware of yeah. the shit that she gets in the media um and you know it's, it's just i mean what's what's the future for the the, the monarchy now i suppose like i mean King Charles the Third hardly rolls off the tongue. There's not as I said to some friends earlier, I mean he had the success of all previous King Charles's. That's <laughs> all I will say on that one. If you don't know your British history, go on Wikipedia. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, it's it's yeah. I, I just I don't I don't see people having the same sort of enthusiasm. And to be honest, I I quite like I think I think that's maybe a like a topic of discussion in itself um mm-hmm. like the the idea of kind of like british identity like a kind of core pillar of british identity was really tied to the queen um mm-hmm. and i think what we're what we're seeing now is a, a very big media and establishment push to try and drum up the same enthusiasm for the for for charles but what again is it's not quite the youthful coronation that the queen had you know the queen was what 25 when mm-hmm. she became queen i think it was she was, it, in was a... it was seen as it was seen as rejuvenating because she was young well exactly and an idea of potential in youth which i i don't always necessarily agree with but it is a, a universal idea that when you are young there is more potential ahead and it was an idea of rejuvenation for the empire, which in many ways she did do, much to the detriment of many colonised. Um, yeah, I I mean like I, you know, I, I like, mean that that's a whole topic as well that we'll we'll, we'll jump into because I think there is this um, there there does seem to be a very obvious um, split between how a lot of British and uh, probably you know like global north media is shaping it probably you know european and american mm-hmm. media is portraying it and 
you know, like the global south in general, right? Like the difference in the like the global south, like you know, there's <laughs> there's there's African countries fucking celebrating, you know, like it yeah. is it is you know great news, and there's there's lots of people who uh, have family from you know the the global south and from colonized nations that like why like you know there's you know they're outright like saying things like you know mm-hmm. why why should we be celebrating it why why are we being forced to like celebrate it and told that we're grieving and and all the rest um i think it's like it's in it's interesting because as you're kind of saying earlier like social media means that like that can't be hidden anymore um Mm -hmm. and i think like one of the problems is obviously been being in the uk it's quite hard to start to have those conversations because i'd say even even a generation older than you know the two of us has this kind of view of the queen as a constant throughout Mm -hmm. their entire lives and it doesn't matter if they're overtly pro-monarchy or they've never really bothered there is still this um this sense of you know oh she's always been there kind of thing you know, there's still a wee bit of national it's identity. The, it's still the end of an era. Oh, yeah. It's the, end of, it's the end of the second Elizabethan era. Um, and that's, you know, when you say it like that, it sounds historically enormous, which it is in a way, because yeah. this could very well be the, the end of British monarchy. We, they've survived yeah. the, the downfall of most of European monarchy, and this could be Queen Elizabeth II, this could be the end of it. And it is a, a historical moment. It is a, a, a buck from the norm for many of us. Like, I grew up with always having a queen like i still can't say the world the word king charles without kind of going quick quick you know i keep doing that because i'm going (laughs) you know like it's it's hard and it's it's funny to me because i grew up in um i did um girls brigade and and you know girl guiding and all that stuff and it was always that kind of thing where you pledge allegiance to the the queen when you're doing the flag yep and i'm now going if i was if i was a kid now and if, if i was doing that if i'd been in like girl guides for like 12 years and some people are in it for life i'm going it would be so weird to suddenly have to switch to King Charles. Yeah. If you've been saluting a flag every day for if you if you are a camp leader and you've been saluting the flag every day for 30 40 years to Queen Elizabeth yeah. and all of a sudden you're it's King Charles. I imagine that would be difficult. And it's it does yeah. you know it affects those people in a small way even if they're not pro monarchy. It's still a normal part of British experience. Yeah, um, I would no yeah. Matter where you are and I think, like, th- there is, uh, you know, kind of speaking back to how it is that kind of, like, core core tenet mm-hmm. of British identity, like, th- there is this kind of wound, I suppose, now in, you know, like, to, to be to be British, you know, it's the, it's the Queen, it's the Corgis, it's the Crumpet, it's like, all mm-hmm. of that now is, is effectively gone. I mean, I reckon there'll be a lot more people who speak about the Queen like you know l- like longing for the for the queen almost the elizabethan era yeah then, they're then, longing then they'll, actually... they'll be longing for her over charlie which is well fine. yeah I'm i mean already, like, i'm already seeing it yeah you know? as i mean i think it's again kind of back to that you know she, like it's not a youthful coronation he's 71 years old um doesn't matter if he reigns for 20 years you know he's an mm-hmm. old he's an old old guy um, no offense to anyone who's older who's listening in, but like you know, is he seventy three? Okay, he's even older than that. Like seventy three, and he's he's getting his first job. <laughs> um, you know, it's 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 quite. Um, you know, it is like, are we really are we really going to see King Charles like tour the Commonwealth? Is is that going to be his... Is that all oh, he's newly coronated? I mean, he'll he'll turn up in some of the Caribbean countries that are still part of the Commonwealth. And I wouldn't be surprised if, like, the moment he arrives, they go, oh, fuck it, we're going to do what Barbados is doing. Like, we're, we're out of here, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, because, you know, is, is, what, is he he's going to turn up all, all lavish with the entourage and what expect... Yeah, I mean, the Caribbean royal tours were Will and Kate. Well, even when they turned up, the optics were atrocious because mm-hmm. ev- everyone was behind a fence. 
it was it was the worst possible look and I don't I don't see how I mean you know 73 year old the no, Princess Diana reaching over fences to talk to people and taking selfies with them on the disposable cameras yeah um, I mean like I don't let them do that anymore I mean the only person I can see who's 73 doing like a proper world tour would probably be Bruce Springsteen but like <laughs> you know like that like honestly like it's how is that gonna look? I mean, is he, is he gonna go to, um, Australia and New Zealand and Canada, and, you know, just be this wave of rejuvenation for the monarchy? I mean, half the countries in the Commonwealth are probably on the brink of going. Ah, this is you know what's the point we're in done. this anymore? We're we're mm-hmm. we're done. Um, and to be honest, I actually like I. Like I can kind of, I can kind of see why they would be done, because it's it's not, like, I think a lot of people's view of the monarchy and insti- in, as an institution was inherently tied to Elizabeth as a as a person, you know, like you know, like despite like obviously we kind of know that it is like kind of propaganda, the grandma of the nation, but like for a lot of people, like even my age, you know, it's like a lot of the, you know. I remember lassies back in when I was in high school in the run up to independence and they did see, oh, what about the wee queen? What about Queenie? That kind of like kind of cutesy, oh, she's your wee grandma type figure. Is, 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 is Charles really going to fill that gap? Uh, probably not would be my... No, no. I mean, it is. She, queen Elizabeth II was great propaganda. Hmm. Um, She was a very, you know that kind of dignified kind of 1950s kind of doesn't rock the boat is always polite duty to the country duty duty to the country first blah 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 never really seemed to be rude to anybody whereas charles has been seen being rude immediately to people (laughs) during his proclamations like he literally just waved people out the way and waved stuff off his desk as if it was as if they were dirt yeah. I'm going, you'd never see the queen waving her hand at something, but because she knew she'd been trained into the monarchy as this rigid sort of it was almost the last of the Victorian um, ideal of what monarchy is. Yeah, there was like um, the almost like a that kind of Victorian Edwardian kind of aesthetic and that kind of dignity and quietness, which is what many people wanted from the monarchy. Yeah, um, it, the, the modern monarchy has been what really didn't happen until Diana happened, and that's why mm. she was so popular was because she was you know, outspoken and she she would hug people and touch people and, like, be human, basically. And yeah. it, they now want that from the monarchy at all times, but the, the Queen held herself slightly removed from that, which is, I think was to her advantage. <laughs> but it's, it's funny how the most human person in the royal family is the one who's probably the most distant from the royal family. Like it was yeah. like actually seeing seeing Megan getting hugged by that wee lassie was like it was oh there is that human element to them. Uh, yeah. Like I I can't I can't see the equivalent coming from like Will or Kate than like a kind of designated photo op where they have to awkwardly make, hug you're, a child. Aw- aw- awkward <laughs> yeah exactly and you know you don't you like this is the thing, though, is that, like, obviously Meghan Markle, in her own right, hasn't grown up with that kind of royal family thing. She 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 made her own career, and, uh, you know, she had a full-on acting career. So she knew how to talk to people. It's, like, kind of the, the thing that you absolutely have to do. Um, she's still great in Suits. If you watch the first couple of seasons of Suits before she, she had to leave, which was weird, because instead of wrapping up the show, they actually continued on without her and the main guy. Uh, for a bit because she had to leave to go and get married and be part of the royal family um but like it, it's, it's interesting that like because of the monarchy and because of the current state of like the kind of immediate family around that they're never gonna get a a, a person like Meg- Meghan Markle to make them look more human, human. like mm-hmm. Like, I didn't want to talk crap about uh, Kate and Will's kids, but, like, they will grow up with a very specific... I mean, I think their, like, their nannies and stuff like that, you know, are... You know, I, I don't know how how much a year, but, like, they, they get paid loads. They go to special training. There's almost, like, the, the royal way to behave is being taught to them. And, you know, they're almost going to grow up 
probably a bit stunted by that. And yeah. Whereas, you know, and I think that's just kind of like the nature of the uh, thing. Is like, yeah, <laughs> that's their bunny scene. Kate's kind of styled herself as this sort of barber-clad Range Rover mum, which I'm sure is appealing <laughs> yeah. to aspirational middle classes. It doesn't. It, you're right. It doesn't help to like kind of humanise her for for an audience. But um, yeah, I mean, I think it's. It'll be interesting in the kind of like aftermath of this. Remember, like the queen hasn't been buried yet. She's currently at a Holyrood a palace, um, so that's opposite the Scottish Parliament. Um, and like, you know, it'll be a kind of like obviously the it's going to be moving from the kind of car. It's not a car journey. It's going to be put on the royal train. Yeah, the royal, the royal um, train, and so that, that they can process through the whole country down the, the east coast. I think it's the east coast, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah. And, I mean, that that's that, that's fair. Uh, you know, the last thing you probably want to do is drive the, like, the body of the Queen through the, <laughs> through the infrastructure that's been critically underfunded by the Tory government for 12 yeah. years. Um, so, yeah, you know, that... <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, that... Uh, <laughs> That Royal <laughs> Railway will be pucker as hell, you know, is, you know, that that's a well-maintained railway. And, um, you know, I think it, it was interesting, actually, because obviously it's kind of been uh, mythologized on social media. To, I mean, I remember seeing stuff on Tumblr about this and it was like, you know, what what happens in the event of the Queen uh, passing away? And that was like a big... Like, that was a big talking point because it was like um, the news would go out, the BBC would receive a report saying London Bridge has fallen um, mm-hmm. and a whole operation would start uh, on every echelon of government and the news would all, you know, everyone would change into black and all the rest. And I must admit, I did find it kind of funny that, like, all of that that's been thought about for a long, long time got scrapped because she passed away in Scotland so it became Operation Unicorn, which is just, like... I, uh, uh, yeah, I've got... I didn't know it was named that. <laughs> oh, so it's so it was called Operation Unicorn, and you know, I mean, if you were wanting to try and save the union, I suppose you'd want a kind of big hullabaloo about the, the you know the Queen passing away in Scotland, and oh, Operation Unicorn kicked into gear, um, and all the rest. You know, obviously, unicorn Scotland national uh, Scotland's national animal, um. <laughs> I wonder if they had an operation for every Commonwealth country, and I would, I would, I would like to see the list of what all the operations operation are called. Dragon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> operation Dragon. Operation. Uh, operation London Day. Oh God. Yeah, I just it, it's it's wild to me that it's been. Um, First of all, can you imagine being Nicola Sturgeon and you're waking up and you've been told uh, Operation Unicorn has happened and you're having a moment of like... I read that in a book once. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Um, I mean, like, it's it's one of those things, though, that, like, obviously... Like, one of the... So, I I applied for a job with the Scottish government. um, And... Uh, you know, it was a it's a process. Obviously, you're becoming a civil servant, all this kind of stuff. Um, but on the event of the um, the Queen uh, being announced dead, uh, they basically sent an email like, because all parliamentary business closes, Scottish government business also closes, and um, that means they're basically deleting all the applications, and they would yeah. post the job at a later time. And to be honest, I, I kind of take issue with that a wee bit. Like, obviously, the role that I was going for was a communications role. Um, and there's no way I'm getting it now because people will be able to hear it from the podcast. Uh, but the the thing was... I, I, I just find it quite interesting. It's like, obviously, this has happened. Um, I don't see that as an excuse for the government to shut down entirely. We're in a massive cost of living crisis. We are going to have ridiculous energy bills uh you know like obviously gas prices are through the roof um electricity is piling on the cost for food is increasing um we've had a a, a government that's been um on its knees throughout the majority of summer due to tory incompetence and mismanagement and infighting and if the if this is not just the most 
fucking convenient time for them to say, actually, we're shutting up shop for four weeks. Um, see yeah. you, see you after the coronation, you know, it's because by that time, you know, in the worst way, I kind of want to guilt trip all of the energy companies. Like, if the energy companies really want to show their respect for the Queen, um, they, could, they should just cut energy bills. Um, you know, like, think of that as doing, you know, I, I, if, if they want to paint it as a royal duty or whatever it is, or, you know, showing showing the respect, you know, crack on, um, but don't give us a, a... Don't give us a banner on your website as you then proceed to fleece the other loving shit out of everyone in the country um you know it's just infuriating how that's that's allowed to happen um i mean it's it's bizarre to me that i, I was reading an article and it was that they're they're trying to push through school meals for children because this is happening and they are concerned that with the things being you know shut down and everything else rates of childhood hunger are going to skyrocket in the UK because of the Queen's death and the King's coronation. If this is happening because of a royal family, if already, you know, deprived children are already suffering, if they're going to suffer more Mm -hmm. because the Queen has died and because of a new coronation, surely that itself questions why we have this structure in place. Why do we have a constitutional monarchy at all? If they are not doing anything to better the lives of the people in the country, if they yeah. are so adversely affecting, if you know, if the death of a queen so adversely affects the country that children go hungry, that's a problem. The worst thing I I, I can almost I can almost predict what's going to happen now. the The British government will make a big thing about the coronation. Um, and what I would not be surprised is if they fund a package that gets sent to every school and every classroom, you know, the lyrics to God Save the King, you know, they, they make a big thing about it. You know, they already tried to do it for the the, the Jubilee that was earlier this year. Mm-hmm. It's one of those things that, for me, I think they'll try and target. And instead of actually feeding the kids, what they'll do is they'll they'll try and get the nation national spirit and yeah i mean that's that's exactly what it'll end up being it'll be each kid gets a a leaflet of um you know it's like a wee wee biography of king charles here's the lyrics to god save the queen go be a good british citizen you know that kind of like i I wouldn't be surprised um Mm -hmm. and i think you know as it's kind of been pointed out in chat by uh, dino um you know like criticism of that and I think this is where the British media and the British establishment often just work completely hand in hand to mm-hmm. dictate how the attitude of the country should be. Um, it will get it will get shot down. Don't I mean the lyrics to "God Save the King"? I mean, God Save the King, Queen. Just yeah. I mean, we. I, I woke up this morning. I woke up this morning to church bells playing "God Save the Queen" slash King um, on repeat for an hour. It was horrible. It, like, it's not even... You're in Scotland. It's not even Church of England. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, um, I, we have our own separate Church of Scotland. We have our own separate... Why? Which, by the way... I can understand Church of England doing it, but not Church of Scotland. Yeah. I mean, which, by the way, the new king had to uh, basically state that he would protect the sovereignty of the Church of Scotland. And there's the whole thing around like the kind of claim of right, um, mm-hmm. which is interesting. So that's a royal duty of his is to protect Scottish sovereignty, arguably, which I find interesting. Um, and the BBC rather conveniently cut that out of their coverage um, when he was obviously being, um, you know, pro- proclaimed remotely um, anything pro Scotland. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was just like, uh, yeah. So you've it's. I don't know. Is it, I, like, I, I don't want to get too... I feel like debates around independence and like talking about the claim of right and the technicality of the monarchy being involved in that, it sometimes sounds a wee bit like kind of sovereign citizen like you know, like someone mm-hmm. going and talking about like the Magna Carta um, and why, why they're not complying with a, a law or whatever. Um, but I, I do think that 
Um, you know, what what will Charles really bring to the table? I mean, he's always been. I think he's he's been outspoken on things like the environment and stuff before. Um, but I think he's also been pretty racist, <laughs> um, overtly racist in a lot of cases. Um, and it's always kind of been chalked up to, like, you know, I, I know he's 73, but they've, they've always tried to play the old man makes linguistic gaff. Um, he's very old fashioned, that kind of thing. And in a modern era with social media, that doesn't really... Like we're gonna cancel the king. Yeah, we're, we're gonna cancel the um, king of England. <laughs> so, like it's I, I I don't I don't see how. I, I yeah, can't. and also as Daster Bunny just pointed out in the, the you know the the chat there, let's also not forget that Diana was sixteen and he was twenty nine when they met. Yeah, that's uh nah, that's it's, not um, good. It's not, not nice. It's no, not it's, nice. It's, it's, like it's father, good. like son. But um. <laughs> yeah. It's a. It, it seems to be a theme with the family that. I mean, it's like, a, sorry, it's not brother. <laughs> I mean, Philip wasn't too. great either. Yeah. <laughs> I, I unfortunately met Prince Philip as part of the Girl Guides when I was, um, involved with all that stuff, and it was a. Uh, we were all told to not wear anything. You you have like your jumpers and everything else. You have your uniform that you wear. <laughs> But any of the girls that were, that were um, say, generously endowed were told to make sure you wear a baggy jumper. So uh, that was fun when you're 12. <laughs> fuck. I mean, I, um, I, I, I didn't go. So I, d- I did the Duke of Edinburgh when I was... Uh, so I, I've got a gold Duke of Edinburgh award. Um, and I, I, I didn't go to the event. Um, not out, like, I mean, to be honest, I was thankfully I was out of the country when I was invited to that event. But like... I wouldn't have wanted to go to that event. <laughs> uh, yeah, because... it's never it's never been good. It's I I was involved. I I did a lot of girl guiding and I was involved in a lot of things. It was always like, oh well, we're doing this and we're doing that, and it's you know, you get to meet Prince Philip and the Duke of the, the Duke of Edinburgh is what we call him. Yeah. Um, and it was that kind of like cool. And then after you did it one time, you were like, I don't want to do this again. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I've had enough. I don't want to do it again. Uh, can I be excused, please? But, um, <laughs> yeah <laughs> no yeah. it's yeah i think and again this is like i think so um next next in line as well and mm-hmm. then it'll be what jo- george and I, you know it's like it's george uh, george whatever. george charlotte and somebody else um you can tell you, we're you so don't, invested in the monarchy. But it's just, it's just you, <laughs> like even even saying that there, um, Will might get a chance to be a uh, king. He, he might, as in like I imagine it would really be pit, like pitting out by then. Um, but you know, all all it'll take is for once the once the queen is buried. Um, and like you know, that funeral's all all done and dusted. I, I I wonder how long it'll take for the first Commonwealth country to be like we're out of here, um, mm-hmm. because I I genuinely think it's it's not something that, uh, I I I don't think it's sustainable. I think, like, there there was a degree of respect to the Queen because she'd, like she she was a world figure, um. Charles doesn't have many years to rise to that, and is also seventy three. So he's 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 not. Yeah. Um, I'm not saying that he's been in been in the Queen's shadow all of her day or anything like that, but he's he's just he will never be that important. He's also not had the experiences that she had. You know, she survived that kind of the last bastion of great. You know British propaganda, which was World War Two, yeah, and they rely heavily on. Well, she she, she was a driver, II, yeah. You know, she was a driver. She was a mechanic. Like it was, she had that kind of the useful attributes that people were going. Look, see, she's really down to earth. Yeah. She was a mechanic during World War Two. He's never had that. It's you know he gr- he grows um, organic produce on his farms. And he designs English towns that make zero sense to wander around. Yeah. They're the worst laid out towns you've ever seen in your life, but they're idyllic and picturesque. And you're going, 
Ah, so like um, Marie Antoinette with her, um, you know, her French farm town that she got to cosplay as a French peasant in. Yes. <laughs> yeah, That's I mean, not really giving the same. It's not really the same vibe, you know. Yeah, I, yeah. I think there's 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 a lot of. I mean, again, like people are maybe questioning why we're still seeing this kind of like vigor towards it, but because the Queen's funeral hasn't happened there will be this lingering national sense of oh the queen's still with us still around um still around still relevant still you know all the rest um i think um the you know what 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 does what does a month after the queen's funeral look like you know like obviously we'll all be bankrupted because our energy bills will be sky high but like what does it look like in terms of the the monarchy like what does what what does that yeah. mean um I, I i don't see any like what does it mean for people who are pro-monarchy in the uk like wh where does that like that sense of britishness come from particularly in england like mm -hmm. you know wh one of the things like when uh when the bbc um heard the booing uh, that was happening in scotland you know they tried to basically wash it away with saying um you know, Scottish people um, express their emotions differently from those of you down south, I think, is the kind of clunky wording that they, they tried to come out with. Who um, means yay in Scotland? <laughs> yeah, it's like, what what does, like, what, what does that, like, what, what does Britishness mean for people in England now? Because now, and this is the, like, this, another thing that we've not talked about is obviously, like, a lot of unions have called off their strikes, particularly for this. And mm -hmm. you can kind of weigh up both sides of it. Like, they were going to get monstered in the media um, if they if they pushed ahead with the strikes. At the same time, I think they were going to get monstered in the media anyway. And Can you imagine how affected it would have been if the rail strike had continued whilst the Queen has planned to head back to London via train? Can you imagine <laughs> if they held the Queen's corpse hostage to get what they needed? I mean, like, it's... I just, I find that it's, it's kind of weird because, like, you've got, like, you can't really call it, like, like, you know, trade, trade unionism. Like, what, have we got, like, kind of, like, monarchal syndicalism? Is that, is yeah. that, is that a term? It's just like, so what, so you're, 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 you're wanting to strike, you're wanting to improve the working conditions and working wages of your workers, but if the, if the if the like I'm I'm kind of concerned about the precedent it sets right because a national event slash national emergency will call off the strikes, mm -hmm. um that to me is a kind of a worrying precedent to set because what what happens the next time we want to strike and I mean at the moment um you know the cabinet is you know Liz Truss's cabinet is in there we've got J Jacob Rees Mogg who utterly despises workers rights he hates he hates the fact that paid time off is a thing um he hates the fact that people can unionize and strike um what does a uk look like where you've got unions who'll happily park it out of you know respect for the monarch but you know <laughs> next next time if the tory government gets it was way what happens when they start to strip workers rights what's the okay. what's the thing there i mean th this is Jacob Rees-Mogg is a man who stood up in Parliament and said that some of the some of the most um, generous and like the best time for Britain was during the the kind of industrial revolution in terms of working conditions and relying on the benevolence of the people who ran the factories made us the most productive nation in the world. X Y Zed. Um Yeah, he wants to go back to when children were allowed to go down mines. Well, yeah, biggest. I mean that's that is pretty much it. And it's like how, you know, how can we? I mean, and I think it kind of speaks to you know that Elizabethan era has now ended, which was mm -hmm. maybe the last, the last connection to that kind of Victorian Edwardian, like, appearance of the monarchy. We're now moving into a monarchy that doesn't deal with any of that um i i i don't, I don't know where we're gonna go 
I'd like I mean what like what does what does what's Charles's view if the Tory government does start to propose well we can get 14 year olds working in McDonald's we can get 12 year olds cleaning chimneys like what happens in that kind of a uh, scenario you know it's uh Sorry, just for people asking in the chat my shirt is my grow positive vibes with the skeleton watering the flowers growing out of its skull Cool. So, there we go. Just, well, getting on theme, we're nurturing positivity via, you know, <laughs> via yeah, via <laughs> via probably the most like intense topic oriented podcast that we've done so far. Um, just giving you, just giving you a, a boob break. That's what's happening. <laughs> It'll fit in nicely with what we were talking about before the <laughs> before the podcast started. But um, yeah, the. I'm I I don't know where we're gonna go. I mean, like one of the one of the other things that I thought was really interesting. I suppose it's like a kind of microcosm of how this is maybe playing out in America. Is that um there was a there was an academic and I and I can't remember her name, um but an academic basically you know kind of like a blue check mark on Twitter, um basically posted saying, you know, why are we ce- celebrating the life of a, a colonialist and um it was jeff bezos of amazon quote tweeted her oh, um, yes. and you know started started beef but it turns out that that academic actually supports the amazon unionizer a uh, like guys who like the the main the main kind of amazon union guy who met with mm-hmm. joe biden and things like that so she's quite buddy with them so it was like it was just quite an interesting like dynamic that you've got like Jeff Bezos. Chris Smalls, thank you, Cinnamon Pancakes. Chris Smalls, there you go. Cheers. Um, so like, she was great. For, I'm I'm desperate to. I'll find her actually. If you give me one minute. Um, but there was the, the thing from Jeff Bezos. It was interesting that Jeff Bezos would like quote tweet because it meant that Jeff Bezos was obviously on, on Twitter looking at this, and I find it interesting that um. Sorry, so the woman's name is... It has been deleted on account of... Uh, apparently it violates Twitter rules. That's an interesting one. Sorry, the woman is called Uju Anya. So she's a, she's a professor in uh, Pittsburgh. Um, and unfortunately the tweet's now been deleted uh, on account of the... Obviously Jeff Bezos trying attention to it, probably. But... I think it was interesting because you have a bunch of kind of like right wing commentators and they are realizing in real time how their deaths will appear like on social media. Um, like a when, celebration. Well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, <laughs> in, it's interesting. Like, obviously, no one likes to think that they'll be uh, their death will be like celebrated, but there was definitely a there's definitely like this realization of people going shit people are gonna have a field day when i die and it gets announced on social media um because like there was there was just a barrage of like memes obviously there was this kind of like international solidarity uh you know you had uh, countries in the global south um like as like, you know, their flags were put next to, like, the flag of Ireland, and mm-hmm. it was, like, you know, them shaking hands, or them all, like, kind of celebrating together, and, and things like that, and I, I think, I think it's just really interesting how you do have this very British nationalist, very conservative, small, small group of people, um, realising that they're actually, their, their views and the views of the, you know, the Queen and the monarchy are not as popular as they thought it was and like some of them are trying to say oh you know like tributes from around the world have come in uh, and all the rest it's quite um it's quite interesting to see folk kind of clock on to the fact that you know when you know jeff bezos dies or you know even even lesser people i mean like fucking I think it was what Jeremy Clarkson. Jeremy Clarkson was giving it the big yin, saying like, "You can tell that the people on left who are left wing are disgusting on Twitter." <laughs> it's like <laughs> you're you're <laughs> you're just a dauber. <laughs> Maybe if you're not if you're less of a dick in life, people won't celebrate your passing as if it's you know yeah. like that. 
to me, if you are looking at this going, these people are going to celebrate when I die. How is that these people are bad and not shit? Maybe I should change my life. Maybe I, it's a literal Scrooge moment. Like it's a literal, you are looking into the future. You are being offered this Dickensian glimpse into what the future holds for when you die. And you're going, oh, well, that's, the, that's them being terrible. Nothing to do with the way I'm leading my life. How do you have such a Victorian value and you completely miss the point of Charles Dickens's work? How mm. does how are you that you know, self involved that you miss the fact that you know the point of the Dickensian narrative that you are so fond of when it comes to British values is that if you are not a good person you will be haunted and you will be scorned and all these things, but you're making it into the fact that these leftists are the villain. Like how do you miss that point but, so badly? Like the one the thing that I like the thing that I find ba like really interesting about that is that like. A lot of these people hold up Dickens as the like as the go to, like, exactly. And they, like that was that was actually one of the authors that Jacob Rees Mogg mentioned in his speech, and it was like, like what back to the Dickensian days? I fucking hope not. <laughs> the Dickensian days, please, were sir. Advocated for the the abolishment of you know um, debtors prisons, and they talked about the working conditions of children being left in orphanage. Like Dickens is not what these people think it is. They yeah. look at Dickens and they see the, the, the you know the, the rise in capitalism and they go, Well that's what we want. That that's surely that's the values and you're going, You are missing the, the, the you know, the wood for the trees here because that is not what Dickensian fiction is about. Dickensian fiction is bringing attention to how deplorable these people are. Yeah. You are not the hero in this instance. <laughs> <laughs> you are the villain that Charles Dickens hated. Like, I don't know how you can miss that unless you, you are just so entrenched in your right wing worldview that it's literally, it's just, you've taken it and turned it into part of your propaganda. Like, it bothers me because I have seen it on Tumblr where people use Dickensian as, you know, like, oh, well, it means this. And I'm going, that's really not what Dickensian means, but it's been warped to fit mm. British imperial propaganda. Dickens was actively writing, we should be harassing rich people until they give, you know, working class people, you know, pay. That, pay that's rights and everything else. Rights. I mean, that's literally, you know, the Christmas Carol, the founding of the most iconic Victorian Christmas, you know, story is rich man <laughs> harassed by ghosts to change his ways because he's being a dick. That's yeah. That's it. It's not to do with, oh, look, this rich man, you know, he develops a heart and he gives a gift of charity. No, he has to be terrorised into it by seeing the fact that people will actively be dancing on his grave. <laughs> he yeah. doesn't have a change of heart. He has the fear of revolution put into him. Yeah. It just abs it just it gets me. Sorry. That's, no, that's, I think that's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, <laughs> it's, it's a good it's a good rant to go on. Um but yeah, like Scrooge, like as Dino's saying, Scrooge literally had to see his own fucking dead body to have his mind changed. Um, and see people giving away his belongings and going, oh, I can get a shilling for this. It's going, oh, that's all he's reduced to is monetary value. Yeah. There's no legacy. There is no legacy beyond what his goods can be sold for. And there's nobody to mourn him. That is what Jeff Bezos' future is. Yeah, I mean, one of the, one of the more, it's probably not a recent picture, but like some of the, some of the gown and, you know, like wearing the crown and holding the scepter and all this sort of stuff. Like a lot of the memorial photos that the newspapers mm -hmm. have been, have been picked apart to death. It's like that there's from Kenya. That was pillaged from India. You know, you're like going through it all, you know, cause there's, you know, there's diamonds. There's everything. I mean, like the, the diamonds embedded in the crown alone are just in insane. I mean, one of the one of the comments that I did see was um, it was talking about how much, like the the value of one of the diamonds in the crown could pay for, I think it was something like seventy five thousand, a uh, young people's college tuition, in mm -hmm. in 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 one of the countries. I think it was South Africa. It might have been um, somewhere else, uh, but it was like that could pay for. I mean, like, obviously it's priceless. I'll never, uh, you know, purchasing one of the diamonds. Was it, there's a diamond called, is it the Heart of Africa? Or the Pride of Africa? There's, there's... I think a it's the Heart of Africa. And it's like, ah, uh, it's just, I, I don't, I, I... The thing that also gets yeah. me, have you ever <laughs> been to the Tower of London? 
Uh, have, I you have, ever, have you ever done the I've tourist not, thing? I've not, I've not been inside. I've seen it. Star okay. of Africa. I, I, I've done the tours because we, we did it as part of a school. And you go through, much like you can do in um, you know Edinburgh Castle and Stirling Castle, you can go through and you can see jewels and everything mm. else. And you get to you know what was formerly the Queen's Crown Jewels. And it's, it is the most wealthy you have ever seen in one place. It is a Scrooge McDuck vault <laughs> of misbegot wealth. And the first thing you see upon exiting that room is a donation um, bin to give money to keep the... The, the, the Tower the, of maintain, London operational. To maintain, to maintain the Tower of London. What and the to, fuck? And, and to clean the, the Queen's jewels, basically. And even as a 14-year-old, I remember looking at that and going, there's something wrong here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's a... <laughs> like... Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, there's also the Queen or Diamond as well. Uh, that's the bunny. That's a good one. And uh, that's probably mm-hmm. one of the more famous ones as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's something that's always like I, I've I've been to London a couple of times. It's it's, it's fine. <laughs> like I like I never did. I did one one trip. I did a um, advanced English trip because we went to the place that Shakespeare's from. <laughs> You could tell I was really into it. Um, where's that one place? Is it Stoke on Trent? Uh, um, Is it Stoke on Trent? Out of my head. It's Shit. Um, Stafford upon. Avon. Stafford upon Avon. I knew it was the dash on. I was like, dash I was on dash. And then as soon as you asked me, my brain went, "No, nope, we don't retain this information." <laughs> it was like, Stafford upon Avon. Yes. Nah, nah, Shakespeare's from Stoke on Trent. No, no Stafford. I knew. I knew it was one with dashes. <laughs> um, so yeah, farming no, country. Yeah, Stafford upon Avon. So like, went there. There was actually quite nice. Like it was, it was, I like, it was I, fine, it's one of my favorite but we also went to a uh, Shakespeare's um, theatre uh, in the London, Globe. the Globe. And to be honest, it is it's like it's impressive. But that was like that's probably the most touristy stuff I've done. Like, I've never done any of the tourism surrounding the royals. Like I've never been to like the Tower of London. I don't. I can't. Did I go in the London Eye? I don't know. Um, you can tell I'm a great London we did. tourist. <laughs> we went um, for a second. We went first. We didn't really have a first honeymoon, but we went for a second honeymoon right before I emigrated here because mm. we were flying in from London, um, and we did a, a, some of the tourist things. We did the London Eye. We did uh, the murder walks and everything else like that as well. Yeah. And we avoided pretty much most of the stuff to do with the monarchy, which is funny because when we're in Scotland, you know, I, I routinely take Mothran around castles and everything else yeah. because as American, it's very novel to him. I mean, when we had our wedding. We had 30 odd Americans come over for our wedding and we basically, they just did the castle tours and they loved it. But then when we ourselves went to London, we didn't do any of the kind of the royal mm. stuff. But we did yeah. you know, a lot of the murder walks and the, the Jack the Ripper walk and everything else. And the London Eye was um, extremely overpriced for what it was. But um, it was, I, I love the quote. It is no secret that I am a is... Shakespeare. I, I was a Shakespeare kid. I was a <laughs> for that. Uh, we went to is... the Globe. Um, it is a really impressive like building and like all of the all of the wee bits of knowledge because there's also a kind of museum attached to it as well um Mm -hmm. like you're not you're not just standing in the arena and i know that there's sometimes uh like plays and stuff like that but like we uh, we were just kind of like exploring um one of the other things that i did in london was like went to a couple of the museums like some of the war museums are quite interesting Mm -hmm. um like quite like to do that and of course there was like there was quite a really, like, kind of harrowing one where you go in and it's like, um, like to the Holocaust, and it's like, the room is basically filled with shoes, um, oh yeah, like, mm-hmm. and it's and it's like one of those kind of like big eye openers. But again, it's you know have have never been to London specifically for royal tourism, and I think this is the thing where, um, like Fran, it's almost like France has got this right because like when. Like, you can go inside all the palaces in France because it's, like, Versailles open. Versailles is gorgeous. I know. Versailles looks amazing. It's actually one of the places that, um, you know, me and Jessica are keen to, to, go, and, to go and explore. And the, um, the fact that you can um, is really good. I mean, French... It's almost like French monarchy tourism brings in more money than the alive monarchy <laughs> that we've got, like, here. Um, you know, like Versailles. I mean, imagine if, like, imagine if people could go inside Buckingham Palace. It would, it would take well, a, a while. The one thing they'd see how run down it is compared to Versailles. <laughs> yeah. Because that was the one thing I always remembered about when you go into Holyrood. You look around and you go, the carpet's threadbare. Mm. 
you know, and you're going, this is not good for tourism. It, it just kind of shows that they're so stingy with money over certain things. <laughs> but um, just to comment on uh, Simon Pankey said, I don't think most people go to London for monarchy stuff. There is a huge tourist industry based on monarchy tourism in London. Absolutely mm. massive. Um, it, and a lot of it's aimed at um, like a kind of the American and other parts of Europe as well. But there's a, there is a huge, you know, tourist drive around that. And you can literally go to like travel agents or, you know, there's these um, in the similar vein that you can do Outlander tours. They, they have that kind of in England, they do have the, the monarchy. You go to things like um, you, you tour the, you go to outside Buckingham Palace, you go to look at other things, you go to Harrods for afternoon tea, you go to Claridge's. It's that kind of quintessential idea of Britishness that is only experienced by a very select few people. Mm. Um, so it's really not the quintessential British experience. It's the it's the experience of royalty, and that's what the the tourist industry is based on. Um, yeah, yeah. It, waxwork monarchy is a good word for it as well. I mean, one of the things that I saw, um, which I thought was quite interesting, because it was a comment on the American view of the monarchy, is that you've got a kind of like. There's a there's like a cultural phenomenon in America which kind of likes the idea of that hereditary title privilege side of it. That obviously America like modern America's kinda of got nothing to really do with, but there's this kind of like I don't want to say it's nostalgia, because it's like I, I don't think America can really be nostalgic for having a king or queen. But like there's really fought a whole war to well, yeah, yeah. But like there, like there, there apparently is there's like particularly for some. I mean, it's quite it's quite weird hearing. Like I've I've heard I've had some folk on Tumblr like message me about it and stuff, and it's like, like people are really quite focusing on on like the the royal family and like you know they're getting they're getting upset over the you know the queen dying and and things like that, and it's is you know it's it's probably hit some of them harder than it maybe hit some people here, you know? Yeah. Um, And it's, there is, like, it was just someone, I can't even mind who it was, but it was someone on, on Twitter It was basically commenting on how there is this kind of, like, weird phenomenon where it's, like, a kind of romanticization of the, the monarchy. Not too dissimilar, almost, from, there's a certain Russian nostalgia to the monarchy as well. Now, obviously, like, Russians got rid of their monarchy way before... Um, you know, some other like groups have kind of shed their ties mm-hmm. to the monarchy, but like they got theirs kind of done with kind of like what nineteen sixteen I think was Russian Revolution, um, and when they like replaced the monarchy, obviously there was then um Stalin and like all the rest of it, um yeah it was nineteen sixteen was when it kind of started, uh, mm-hmm. seventeen was the the thing because it was it was mid it was mid World War One and that's why uh, Russia kind of pulled out of it, um, but the the thing the thing with like Russia is like there is this there is sometimes this nostalgia in Russia for like the kind of a pre Soviet era monarchy, um, not in any kind of like realistic sense. I don't think anyone's chasing down. I mean, all the whole family was fucking murdered, but um, like I don't think anyone's desperate for like a like a new monarch to be reinstated, you know, from no. you know, like Nicholas's heir or whatever it was. Um, but there, there is this, cause I, I wrote one of my essays in university about it. It was like, I had to look at a specific film and how that tied into a uh, Russian nostalgia. Um, and it's, it's really quite interesting because obviously like Russia has, um, this, you know, like Catherine the Great and, and, and all the rest of it, all that kind of monarchical history as Russia developed, throughout the kind of, you know, 17, 1800s. Um, and then they obviously had the Soviet Union um, and all of the <laughs> all of the shit that, that came with the Soviet Union. Um, and then there's this kind of view back. It's like, oh, well, what happened to... Like, obviously, we're all kind of modern now. We've got, we've got Pizza Hut, <laughs> thanks to Gorbachev. Mm-hmm. Or they don't now. I think there's actually a new McDonald's and a new Starbucks in Russia uh, after... Um, the obviously McDonald's and Starbucks shut down um, after the uh, invasion of Ukraine, but like there is this kind of like longing for like the monarchy, um, and to be honest, there's actually something that I think if the UK decided to get rid of the um, 
the monarchy and actually like you know become a mm -hmm. republic or you know if, if scotland becomes independent and we decide that we um want to be a republic you know i feel like there's not going to be this longing to go back to it um in the same way that maybe some other nations feel like at least this, not like, for nostalgia. a couple of generations because I, I think i think what we are seeing is the power of mythology i think people are mm. looking back at mythology and seeing well so you know it stories are a very powerful thing and this is what i actually did my dissertation on in university is how modern fantasy and sci you know sci-fi have now taken the place of mythology and legend and mm. it's not a coincidence that you do still see you know in especially in fantasy you see the one just king constantly yeah. The one, the, you know, the one good monarch. And it is completely, it's this fictionalised ideal that if we just find the right person, everything will yeah. be fine. And I think that's where a lot of the longing comes from. Because we are living through interesting times, um, put it that way. Uh, and I think there's a lot of nostalgia for, well, things were simpler back then. No, they weren't. Um, but we just had, we had less information we had less constant feedback from things, so the world seemed less awful because you only ever were really dealing with your corner of the world. And now we get constant feedback from everywhere thanks to the internet. And um, it's that kind of... Um, it's the longing for a simpler time when you could rely on the king... You know, when kings were ordained by God and they would, you could trust them to do the right thing. And that is, it's never really been the case. But they want the simplicity of that myth. They want the, the propaganda from history that has led them to believe that things were simpler. And I think that's a big part of what... I mean, I saw it, in the, it go by really quickly in the chat. The Queen's almost been Disneyfied. Yeah. At this point. <laughs> She's not a real person. It was. It's that kind of Disney, well, ordained by God. It was the... it just, you know, it's, that, it's very much that, the, you know, I think some people's fascination is, well, if, you know, real monarchy exists, then my fairy tale of you know, can also come true. My dreams can also come true because the monarchy is still a thing and it's it's like yeah. it's a weird kind of disconnect from actually understanding what they are versus the the propaganda of what they are. Um uh, it's funny you mentioned kind of like the Disneyfication because I totally agree. Like see the like there was a couple of comics that came out or like artists uh, were were paying tribute and it was like the amount mm -hmm. that had that had her holding Paddington Bear's hand and like walking off into the sunset with like a corgi. It was like, uh, there's just, a, I don't know, there's something. There's I, some I, so a lot of the stuff to do with the artwork and the corgis really bothers me because a lot of stuff I saw on Instagram was it was the corgis looking sad people drawing pictures of the corgis yeah sad. yeah or was the, there was the picture of the corgis getting loaded onto the plane people don't seem to realize that picture's from 2002 yeah so it's 20 year old it's not recent corgis and people go, oh you can see the sadness in their eyes it's, it's a dog <laughs> you know it, it, you know, was, it's, there was it's a 20, it's a 20 year old picture those corgis are gone you know? <laughs> the, uh, the, the, the worst the worst one I saw was a Facebook group for corgis right? as in people who are corgi owners and it was like has anyone noticed their corgis have been a wee bit sad almost like they can sense something's happened it's like your corgi the fucking <laughs> lives off of the most generic dog food and you take for a walk once a day when you can be arsed is not the queen's just like a secret network that speaks to the I mean, queen's corgi corgis like, are fake dogs so for all we know they are talking through the fairy the <laughs> all fairy. right okay going back to disneyfication of things <laughs> yeah uh, but yeah it's i i unfollowed a lot of people on i am um, the Every, there's another disability advocate who I up until fairly recently really liked was Jessica Kilgren Frozard. Her page has been nothing but a um, monarchy propaganda for the last two days. And yeah. I, as a disabled UK person, I am looking at that and going, how can you support a system like that that actively keeps you in poverty? Mm. How can you fall for this Tory propaganda? And um, I think it, it's a shame because I like her and her wife. I do like them. But it, it's nothing, it's been nothing but, you know, oh, you know, her channel's on pause because she's in mourning. And I'm like, fair enough, you can mourn the change of things. But I'm going, I, to me, the disconnect is being a chronically ill disabled person in the UK who relies on benefits. 
I don't know how you can buy into this British propaganda. Like, I don't yeah. understand it at all. I think that's... Like, at all. I think one of the, like, one of the things that we've, we've not spoken about yet is, like, Labour's reaction to this. Keir Starmer has been absolutely nauseating with his, like... Th- he, he has currently yeah. blacked out his Twitter profile picture. Like, Keir Starmer's pro- t- profile picture is a solid black circle at the moment. And mm-hmm. it's, like, completely black. He's got a banner up that's Queen Elizabeth II, the 21st of April, 1926, to the 8th of September, 2022. Like, on, like, he, on 9-11, nine, on nine he was, uh, uh, as it, wait, yeah, oh, today, sorry, today is 9-11. Um, he, you know, he, he was making comments. It's like, so grief is the price we pay for love. Queen Elizabeth II said in support of those who lost loved ones in the terrorist attacks on 9-11. He's like, he's gone completely, like, nuts. Very he's like, cool it's, monarch, all of a sudden. Well, I mean, like, this is the thing with the kind of modern Labour Party, you know, they're, they're you know pro monarchy and like yeah, they're, they're basically you gotta to remember he's light. he he was also queen's counsel so he obviously he's a he's a lawyer he's he's a qc um and now well now he's a kc i suppose um but yeah like the his his whole thing's been pretty like pretty bad just to watch <laughs> um uh it seems like there's a kind of binary. So you know, we're talking about like you know Tory propaganda and how they will use this to shape British national identity. But it's like aided and abetted by a Labour Party who aren't really in opposition and also just think we'll agree, like we'll agree wholeheartedly, um, and you know pay pay homage and you know not support workers and and all the rest of it. Because I mean, I think that's one thing that's pretty obvious is that like. Keir Starmer's Labour Party doesn't give a shit about workers who are striking or anything like that. Um, mm-hmm. It's interesting that, you know, all... When they should have been supporting the unions, they've kind of went all in on, like, monarchy mourning um, mm-hmm. and, and you know, haven't done anything to kind of help out the unions. And uh, to be honest, I'd, I'd, I'd put, I put it out on uh, Tumblr that I'd, like, I'd kind of come down on the side of well you shouldn't really cancel strikes in event of of this fair enough you were gonna i mean you were gonna get monstered by the media anyway you've been monstered by the media for the better part of you know a couple of months now you must have gotten used to it but like i suppose maybe the unions felt i'm not sure if the unions felt pressure from the workers and they thought that the workers expected that they, they would call off the strike but I mean, in a cost of living crisis, who the hell's that helping? Um, so mm-hmm. I mean, you know. it's yeah, it's difficult because you can see that they, they, you know they're trying not to get villainized by the press, but they're already being villainized. Yeah, and it also the idea that well, it can be removed in the event of an emergency. That just means the government will create emergencies so that you have to break the strike. Well, I mean, I, imagine, imagine the the Tories. You know, come out and say, as the passing of the Queen um, has set precedent for this, we believe that uh, we'll need to change the law to allow for allow the public to sufficiently mourn. Um, so what we'll what we're doing is we are passing a law that um, unions and uh, people who are part of unions are not allowed to strike in the event of nas- like significant national events. Um, there'll be a significant national event every fucking week. You know, that that's that's yeah, that's, yeah. that's that's what it'll end up is, you know, like, oh, sorry, there's actually a significant national event. And you know what's worse? It'll even be turned around and fucking used against us. It'll be like, there's a significant national event that's happening and that's the cost of living crisis. Therefore, you can't strike. You know, it's illegal and we'll use the police to break it. And I'll break it up. Um, you know, I I don't know. I'm feeling it's it's not a it's not a great place to be in. Um and yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't say that anyone's mourning. I think there's some people that are being told to mourn and mm-hmm. there'll, there'll be a certain percentage of the population that go, okay, I'm now in mourning. Um, and then there'll be another group that are maybe indifferent about it. 
but like I I I don't like being told that I'm in mourning because to be honest I'm actually wondering about how to put food on the table and how to pay my bills I'm not I'm not overly concerned with one of the wealthiest kind of families in the world um, getting I do want, lavish I do want to say ceremony. That if, you are, if, if it is giving you complicated feelings as well, if you that's are fine, feeling grief yeah. for whatever reason, that's fine. But it's, you know, death can, you know, strange things can hit you in strange ways. I've seen some people saying, oh, it reminded me of when my grandmother died. That's fine. Mm-hmm. That is completely fine. The issue is not with people experiencing personal grief. It is the propaganda of being told you are grieving and you will grieve. Yeah, I mean, I think the there's... Media, it's the complete media blackout that is trying to insist that it's a nation of mourning. Meanwhile, you've got people booing and shouting guillotine in the street. But they're being talked over and being told, this does not exist. There yeah. is no war in passing, passing say. You know, it's that kind of... <laughs> That level of propaganda that's happening, and that is what the problem is. The problem yeah. is not with individual people experiencing their emotions. The problem is with yeah. being told you you are experiencing this. I mean, I think that, that's that's a really good point. As Soren G mentions in chat, is it's, it's actually the enforced mourning. I mean, like one of the other posts that I put on uh, Tumblr today was a city council saying that bike racks wouldn't be operational to comply with a period of mourning. Um, I'll, I'll just pull it out just uh, let me read it so it was advanced warning royal period of mourning this cycle rack will be closed from Friday the 9th of September until Wednesday the 21st of September if you leave your cycle here between these times it may be removed we apologise for any inconvenience Norwich City Council it's like the bike rack it's, yeah, yeah it's, it's the <laughs> it's it's the to be honest, it's almost like the the ridiculousness of, like I I I understand when people feel like it's like the end of an era, and you know it might not be grief for an actual person, but more of a like a kind of oh this is actually a new chapter in the world or in the society that I live in. You know there'll be a lot of people going and we're like awaiting this kind of day, being like you know when the queen passes, there would you know, there would actually be a change as in, you know, considering how long she's, you know, been queen for, if it, it was going to, you know, it, it's the same kind of feeling I actually get on New Year's Day. Like, that's how I get, it's, it's almost like a new, there's like a new yeah, world after that. that. You know, it's like, I, I tend to be, I, I tend to be quite, not sad on Hogmanay, but like kind of reflective. And then New Year's Day is like, okay, that year's, like done this is a kind of a new chapter it kind of feels like that um like i reckon the next in the next couple of weeks are when things will seriously change and we'll actually get a bit more kind of like political analysis on there but i think the key goal of the british media and the kind of british political establishment at the moment is to make sure that we don't get to the political analysis of it too quickly they're desperate to stretch out this period of mourning so People don't get frustrated at the cost of living, you know. Everyone's everyone's minds on on that now. I'm actually wondering if I can pay my bills, but it's like no, no. We'll we'll talk about that in three weeks when the it's national period like, of mourning. Don't be so crass done. for talking about money. It almost feels like don't be so you know don't be so vulgar to talk about money. Don't you know? And it's yeah. Like, you know, very, you if you are able to avoid talking about these things, it's because you do not have the concern. Yeah. It's because you were in a place of security where talking about money is seen as vulgar as opposed to a life and death necessity. And if you are in that situation, you do not get to talk down to the people who are experiencing this. You do not get to tell them you're being vulgar. You are being vulgar by not acknowledging the fact that your upper class privilege has put these people in this position. Yeah. And it's and it's done actively. It's not, you know, a lot of these people, especially Tories, I, think, I don't think a lot of people realise this. Tories believe that they are, because they are born wealthy, they are destined to rule. Because they follow the, the you know the same logic as the crown, is that the, you are put on this earth by God to be in control, the, to rule. And a lot of them take a similar viewpoint. Boris and all those people, they were looking at that going, yes, well, we were born into this privilege, therefore it is mandated by God and it is our right to do. You know, to them, what they are doing is correct. 
they don't think they're not they're not sitting there going I shall do evil plans <laughs> in their head they are thinking oh this is just the way it's supposed to be yeah and, you know and you can't reason with people like that yeah I you mean you just need to float them out <laughs> and yeah they don't get back in it's kind of back to the like you know like that that British identity thing is going to be quite interesting because like. I would say I, I I don't I don't know how a lot of people in England perceive their Britishness, but I imagine like people who see themselves as British in Scotland that probably a lot of it was tied to the Queen. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm wondering if now that the Queen's kind of gone, like, and this is back to the the other thing where it was like oh what what about um. If Scotland was independent, what about all of the, the kids in poverty in England? Do you care about them? It's like, what makes you think that there's people in England who are working class, who are struggling with food and struggling with energy bills? What makes you think that they think that the UK is working out absolutely fine for them? Um, mm -hmm. And I reckon there's going to be, like, you know, with, with people who maybe are kind of... I'm not saying they're, they're done with the British identity. They'll still have the British passport and all the rest of it. But, like, they'll they'll definitely not be as tied to Britishness. They might as well start demanding maybe a bit more on the on on the English side. I mean, England should get its own parliament. At the moment, it doesn't mm -hmm. have one. Um, and that's that's something that I always think is quite interesting in the Scottish independence debate because, like, one of the things that I've always said, it's like, it's actually about England getting the government it, it votes for as well. At the moment, it's kind of... Like, I mean, they don't have an English parliament to look after English-specific issues. There's, like, little uh, decentralisation in England. You know, there's not a Northern Assembly. They did reject that idea originally, but, like, why hasn't that been revisited? Uh, there's no reason why the North of England couldn't have an Assembly. Um, so there's, like, lots of opportunity for England as well in the event of Scottish independence. They could actually maybe start getting... A regional and a national government that kind of works for them rather than one that's desperate to cling on to this sense of Britishness and as Dino says like you know one of the you know one of the things is like you know Britishness is going to become more vague you know because like when you hear Britishness and you see Britishness represented in like film and things like that it is very much Queen London double-decker buses red telephone boxes you know, all of which have, you know, the Queen's kind of, like, insignia and stuff on it. Um, with Englishness and Britishness, it's potentially going to become a wee bit more detached, I would say. Um, which, obviously, then you've got to make a really, really good case for Englishness to be uh, progressive and changing. I think a lot of people maybe have a different view on that with things like the English Defence League and, and other things. Um, but they don't get to own Englishness. That still needs to be mm -hmm. kind of like decided. Um, and, you know, it's, it's a good move to start having maybe like a progressive, like English movement that wants its own parliament and would seek to, you know, <laughs> you know, end the United Kingdom. I don't see any reason for it. Uh, any reason for not doing it even. Um, and I suppose another thing that we've not talked around is, uh, is Wales. Like, you know, the title Prince of Wales still exists. It's still given to an Englishman to kind of uh, show authority over Wales, um, mm -hmm. you know, as a, you know, as being wholly absorbed into, into England. Um, and you can imagine that's, you know, like talks on that. I mean, Martin Sheen, uh, I'm not sure if you've seen, you know, like him talk about it. The guy from uh, Good Omens. Michael um, Sheen. Michael Sheen, sorry, not Martin Sheen. What the fuck? Um, Martin was it wasn't Martin his original name and the nurse got it wrong and became Michael. I think uh, that's the story. Anyway. Yeah. Oh, yeah. in that in that in that case, that's totally what I meant. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but no, uh, like Mike, Michael Sheen is like some of the stuff that he's he said. Uh, he's obviously proud as fuck Welsh nationalist. Yes. Um, which we we love to see, and he's uh, you know, there's there's a couple of things he said recently that's been really good, and one of them was. You know, we really need to think about, um, you know, that title, and it's one of those things that maybe you know disappears with the, you know, with changing of the monarchy. Maybe it's time for this to actually end. Of course, 
it's already been appointed. You know, I think I think William is now Prince of Wales. Um, you know, it's already it's already moved on, and that has some issues, obviously, because, like, you know, they're they're they they basically they appointed that they got that through, and there wasn't that time for debate because our national media was saying it's not time for a debate. Um, mm-hmm. they were just wanting to kind of force it through. Um, keep the norm going as much as possible. Keep the norm flowing as quickly as possible as well. Yeah, I mean, and like people like have remarked on it. It's like one of the things that um, is almost quite cold and calculating was obviously the moment the Queen died, um, the the new King King Charles the Third ha- already had like a letterhead all all done up, and you know there was all the there was all the processes that it basically mm-hmm. kicked off. It it felt very mechanical, and I think it doesn't help the royal family to look like you know it, it doesn't make them look human by the fact that it was like okay queen's now died you're not even getting a chance to mourn you've got to start signing things and we, we kick off the the process of you being you know proclaimed and then you'll have your coronation and all this sort of stuff like it, it's robotic almost it's very regimented yeah and you know you could say oh well they've had plenty of time to train for this day this has been uh, you know, this has been on the books. But I mean, like, that process probably hasn't been updated since the last fucking, you know, monarchy, you know? like The, the, when... the process happened because the last one was such a disaster because Elizabeth was on the Commonwealth tour. Yeah. And when the king kicked it. And um, they they put all these things in place because it was such a panic to get her back because they couldn't get hold of her. So it was this huge kind of, like, mad scramble to, okay, well, we'll never have this again. But the the way it's been done is like a fall in morning. How come all this is happening instantly? Yeah. If how come our if our lives are having to shut down, how come they are not shutting down briefly to deal with these things? I mean, like it just I, doesn't it just doesn't look very human. Uh, yeah, it doesn't look human, and it doesn't look like a kind of like normal like a normal family. Like I mean, I'm not. I'm, and they're I'm not, not. That's I'd, the problem. They're yeah. not a normal family. And and arguably, you could see that the price of that. Um, like that privilege and that wealth is that you are not allowed those moments. Um, I would say, well, in that case, that just proves that there's no need for anyone to be in that position. Like, mm-hmm. you know, I, I think, uh, you know, like Harry and Will should be allowed to grieve their grandmother in peace, you know? Um, but instead you get this, like this spectacle that's, you know, all, all tell, you know, there's like so much, there's so much focus on the public and, you know, oh, they're, they're in grieving mode and they're in mourning mode that I feel like it probably outstrips the fact that, you know, they were, you know, they were grandchildren, you know, and, and her children, you know, aren't really getting the, the proper way to mm-hmm. like actually grieve for someone and um, because the focus is on having this kind of like faux grief amongst the rest of the public. Um, it's a staged grief. It's that kind of very, um, like even with the whole like it was when when everyone figured she died. Yeah. And it was the whole Harry is rushing to be with her. He wasn't rushing to be with her. She'd been dead for hours. He was he was rushing to pledge allegiance to the new king. Yeah. That's what I, was happening like, there. It wasn't he's trying to get final moments with grandma. It was literally he's going to go pledge allegiance to the new king because she's probably been dead for hours. Yeah. And it's a. a it might sound really callous, but there's a history of them controlling when these things leak. I mean, they I mean, did they, it with her they, father, with they, they, ki- yeah, they killed her father. They, they fucking... killed her father to avoid the evening press. But no, no, they, 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 I thought they did it so they could make the morning press. They did, but they so... did it specifically because... They, I remember the quote from the doctor was um, to avoid the evening presses because they were read by the lesser people. So they Fuck wanted sake. it in the morning news because that tends uh, to be the more substantial and um, upright newsprints. Which, whereas the evening presses tended to be less... Um, they tended yeah. to be thought of as being like kind of less correct, I guess. Or like, yeah. you know, it, 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 was a, it wasn't just to make the morning press. It was something to do with the classism of it as well. Um, and it's... it's Yeah, but as um, Banrian was saying, um, they gave him an absolute massive dose of morphine and cocaine yeah. basically yeah and it was so that they could announce it in the morning press yeah which is like i mean it's, it's interesting because obviously this is the first time that anything like that's happened with 24-hour news um yeah. and 
<laughs> you can you can see what that's fucking looked like because it's it's just been it's just been everywhere and it's been constant and you know i wouldn't be surprised if next week when we're on to our next episode it's still going on and it'll be like this until she's i mean it's the 19th that she's um that her funeral is um so yeah that's next well that's not not monday tomorrow the following monday um so there's you know like there's obviously that period there's then the period in the aftermath of the funeral that will be talked about there's then the period before the coronation and after the coronation and it'll just be eked out um i so the one thing is is that like i feel like there's been so many gaffes with charles like obviously there was the affair with camilla if we really want to go back that far there's the the text messages that that he sent her um where i believe he stated he he wanted to be one of her tampons um i'm, I'm not sure no. if you not yet no. no no you hadn't heard that okay um so that's the thing that's been documented and you know like the the beans were spilled on that and it was, it was yeah it was phone hacking um which no one can agree with um but it was you know it, like that like there's all that um lots of people don't like camilla uh, and hate the idea of camilla as queen consort and there's lots of diana fans that hate that and you know it's just like it's all it's all there there's also a bunch of uh, you know racist gaffes and you know there's there's a whole tranche of things that like how, how between between now and the coronation are they really going to build up charles to be that they can't it, it's it, it's they, like the there's there's almost too much you know like it was great to fill gossip columns when the queen was alive and she was the the matriarch that you mm -hmm. know just kind of dealt with all of this um but now the media are trying to build him up to be a character that they haven't been basically taking the piss out of um, or, you know, gossiping about for a long time. Uh, so it's quite interesting seeing, uh, seeing Quickly that. backpedal as fast as we can. Well, yeah, I mean, it's like, how, how are they going to turn him into, I'm not saying they're going to turn him into, like, a super redeemable figure or anything like that, but there's there's not really anywhere for him to, to, to go. Um you know, I, I, I imagine if they try anything, it will be they'll go hard on his passion for a green agenda. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing um, that I can kind of see them trying to make him seem modern and good. So I wouldn't be surprised if one of the first things he kind of says is talking about climate change. Um, which, you know, fair enough. If he has to talk about one topic, it might as well be that one. Um, will governments listen? no i don't think so i mean we've got again back to unfortunately jacob rees -Mogg. he wants to drill every fucking ounce of oil out the uk and england also allowed fracking so they've reversed the ban on fracking in england now um so you'll on I, the right side the the plate the instability that it might cause scotland might just drift away <laughs> yeah point. yeah <laughs> it was like per shift. perfect yeah perfect tonic <laughs> plate shift you know what we'll take back beric well so long as it takes beric we'll take beric with us um but yeah i think like that's that's one thing that's gonna be like potentially a clash um, I, I just I, I don't really know where 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 we go next on it. To be honest, I is... don't. I I genuinely like it's it's so weird because like you think to yourself, well, life just kind of goes on, but at the same time, it it also doesn't because we are dependent on these people who hold these such rigid views. Yeah, and it's 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 so bizarre to be also over here in the the US watching it, but also having phone calls with my mother and she's asking me questions about how like it's no secret where i am minnesota gets horrific winters yeah um, it's not you know unusual for us to get down to negative 30 celsius negative 40 celsius and um my mum was asking me you know how, how how do you heat your home and i'm going well my cost of energy is about a third of what hers used to be um 
Yeah. But here's the other things you do. You get blankets. She, she's asking me for advice on how to, you know, heat the house. I'm going, you don't heat the house. You heat one room. You know, you heat the body, not the room. You know, and um, and then at the same time you have, I'm watching the news and it's all these, you know, the billions of dollars or pounds that are going to get spent on, you know, funeral and coronation and all these things that the Tories are doing that are just making the, you know, the UK worse. And I'm going... It's such a weird disconnect to be over here and going. You know, I've said I've said this multiple times. It's like being in the fall of Rome and looking over at Mount Vesuvius and seeing smoke. It's that kind of <laughs> weird. You're in the sacking of Rome and you look over and you're like, oh, Pompey seems to be having some issues. And you just, it's, it's so weird to have both of these things happening at the same time. And it's so weird to have both perspectives and to have this kind of, you know, the news over here reports it slightly differently. Um, but th- at the same time, they also don't, you know, report on specific things that happen in the UK. I hear about most of my stuff either from Twitter or from friends. Um, and it's most of my friends are just going, yep, I can't afford to live this year. And I'm going, this is the UK. This this was, you know, we have, the NHS was put into place for a reason. Welfare was put into place We're, for a reason. I'm, and it's I'm always poli- being stripped away. Yeah, and our politicians boast about being the sixth richest country in the world while all this yeah. happens. I mean, you know, obviously for anyone who follows like my streams normally throughout the week or who've watched other Ice Fear ones, we've, we've spoken about how like, you know, gas and energy companies are predicted to have something like one point seven billion in profit over the next two years. And it's like how like the they are draining and fleecing the core population and all of the money is being is is, is not trickled down it's fucking like stolen up <laughs> stolen upwards gravity. yeah it's, yeah I mean, anti-gravity economics where everything is getting pulled into a select few people who run these organizations um there is yeah there's a massive massive wealth gap that is continuing to grow and I suppose this is what I find kind of um, frustrating is that you have um, you have all these companies at the moment who are touting their um, oh respect respect for the respect for the queen respect for the monarchy and they are kind of publicly stating it at the same time they're turning to their staff and they're saying things like. Um, if there's a bank holiday day of mourning, eh, we're not taking it. Like it's, it's that kind of thing, and it's like obviously the kind of co- the the conflict there is, um, okay, fair enough. Not recognizing that it's a significant event. At the same time, if you're paying your respects, like from a brand perspective, mm-hmm. towards uh towards the monarchy, and then are turning around to your workers and saying, actually, you're not taking that designated day off, then again that kind of highlights that like they're doing it from a you know it's all pr um mm-hmm. and they don't actually give a shit about um uh, you know the, the, their staff um which is quite incredible um one of the things so there was a, a number of republicans from our republic scott and a radical independence campaign scotland they were detained in edinburgh today on suspicion of breach of the peace uh, they were, however, eventually released without charge, um, which is interesting. So, again, it's like, um, and one of the organisers uh, we know, Joy, of our Republic Scott is uh, Tristan. Um, mm-hmm. He says, many thanks to Police Scotland for the free advertising of how the state enforces worship of an unelected <laughs> monarch. And, like, it's true, you know, they, like, there's always this, there's always this thing about how, oh, the monarchy's just got kind of a... Uh, like it's not like it's like soft power. Um, I really is the the monarchy can't really do anything. Um, and fair enough, the monarchy, you know, like the idea of the monarchy going and saying like we're actually shutting down Parliament. Like you know, it's a constitutional monarchy. They're just there to keep tabs. They've got no power. At the same time, we have our police, like pretty much enforcing that people don't protest the monarchy. Um. So, yeah, it's just interesting that obviously uh, the police have jumped on, um, you know, a group of protesters. And, you know, the thing is, is like, you know, all these kind of free speech laws are 
oh, like, you know, it's, it's the thing is, you know, for the right wing, like, cancel culture does exist because they will cancel voices they don't like hearing. I mean, give people on the right the chance to, to really cancel. I mean, look at the, the reaction from the press towards the comedian um, uh, thingy lies it who basically mocked Liz Truss by, like, he went on the show and was basically like, oh, I, I'm extremely right-wing, so I agree with all of this. And, he, like, he made it into a bit of a joke. And then all of a sudden, um, he should never have been invited on. You know, it's like, mm -hmm. you know, it's all that. And it's like, so, okay, so it's fine when one of you fuckers do it. It's not fine when someone who doesn't take your kind of political view does it. Um, yeah, it's kind of... I just also need to comment on the idea that they don't have much power as a constitutional monarchy because I have, if anyone's seeing Mothman in the comments there, uh, Mothman almost got us arrested at um, Holyrood Parliament one time when we were visiting. I've told this story before, but just in case you're <laughs> not aware of it, uh, we, we did a tour of you know Scottish Parliament and um, bringing my American then boyfriend, now spouse, with me, um, we he did political science at school he was very into politics and he was asking questions of this poor tour guide and she mentioned the fact that you know laws have to get signed and then they get sent to the queen for approval and then blah 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 and sent back and mothman went wait a minute i thought the monarchy didn't have any power why are why are these things being sent to them to be signed like can, can she can you know, can the queen affect these laws and the response was well she could knock them back but she never would and yeah. Mothman being Mothman latched on to that <laughs> and went, that's not that doesn't mean no power that means you know this is you know it was a he kept dogging her and asking questions like I just just to clarify the queen could lobby for things or the queen could do this. the queen does the the, the, the queen the, yeah. the queen does <laughs> and this tour guide kept going yes but the the royal family has no power they would never do that they are a constitutional monarchy but she kept dodging the question and then at the side of my eye i noticed security coming towards us <laughs> i was just like shut up shut up shut up <laughs> i start, i literally i took a step to the side just absolutely <laughs> i'm, I'm I not fucking know, with I him know. i don't know engagement <laughs> ring on what you're talking about um, at the end of it when everything had cleared, this um, tour guide came over to us and she leaned in and she's going, you were asking them very astute questions. So <laughs> um, just so you know, we had to get rid of some reporters this week for asking the same question. They thought we were reporters who had infiltrated the tour to ask questions and to get them to say incriminating <laughs> things about the monarchy. And it was one of those moments where in my head I'm going, I'm going to have to call my future mother-in-law and say, by the way, your son's in a Scottish jail because I think he is an independence agitator. Yeah. <laughs> so that was our one and only trip to uh, UK, the <laughs> Scottish Hollywood Parliament. And I'm going, I am taking you nowhere else. You can ask questions. <laughs> but it was just such a, this American just comes up and starts asking awkward questions about monarchy. Yeah. At a time when Scottish independence was really starting to take off as like a, as a movement. Get and it was motion. just one of those things that I'm going... It was in the middle of the first indie ref. It was, oh, it was no. literally weeks before the vote <laughs> as well. And I was just like... Amazing. So yeah, if anyone says, well, they don't have much power as a constitutional monarchy, that's bullshit. We almost got arrested for questioning it. <laughs> the, um, it's interesting as well. Like, you know, she, she absolutely does lobby for her own interest. There's been a couple of she comments did. there. That's the bunny had a personal... Sorry. <laughs> she had a personal exemption written into the Equality Act so she wouldn't have to hire... Uh, people of colour and that was a thing you know in regards to the staffing issues I think that came out in a report it was either start of this year or the, like last year but there's also been like a bunch of stuff on like land reform as well that she's like you know like crown lands and shit that she she actively lobbies on um, or well she did lobby on and then like the kind of the royal estate uh, lobbied <laughs> on as well um, so I think that's you know that's probably um yeah i think in the in the weeks ahead um i am thinking there's probably a grace period that some commonwealth countries are kind of waiting on and then it's going to be a yeah we're done now um like i mean can't imagine like 
places like India. Is, is India seriously going to go, right, okay, on, on to Charles? I, I find, I would find that difficult yeah. to, to pass. Same with a lot of the Caribbean countries, a lot of the African countries that are... Canada too. I was so... Yeah. You know, well, the, Canada's the actually the most pro-monarchy out of all the Commonwealth yeah. countries. And I don't um, I don't understand why, but it's, it was such a weird thing. Like, it was um, literally... Um, the the news I was watching from from the UK, it was um, oh my God, what is his name, Trudeau, Justin Trudeau, um, yeah, yes, he looked as though he was weeping, yeah, and I was just like, what, what is you know like it was such a weird concept to me because oh you know my perspective is obviously very American from you know from where I'm over here, but it was such a weird thing that I'm going. Right, so I guess there are, there are some people that are actually pro, but it's also people that, you know, the people that have enjoyed the privileges of it. Mm. Whereas there are a lot of, you know, Indigenous and Native people in Canada who have suffered under the colonisation from that UK as well. And it was such a weird thing for me to see that. And it, it kind of made me realise that the people that I talk to are completely removed from that circle of privilege. Because <laughs> all I yeah. heard was people celebrating that she was dead. And then it was like, yeah. oh, there's, there's people in power are actually quite upset in this pro, pro col, you know, this pro kind of commonwealth. Um, yeah, I I think and, like uh, we we could probably spend another hour talking about how the divide between, um, I mean, like for example, there has been some coverage of like Kenya reacting, um, and you know, there's there's people who have been like tortured in in Kenya. Um, mm-hmm. for you know for wanting to you know break away and all the rest of it um, in fact I think one of the oldest women in Kenya um, you know has been on the news recently because I think she you know she was quite vocal in her uh, disdain um, for the monarchy and like there's you know she's like she's ni- she's the same age as the queen or something 96 97 and like it's quite uh, I find there's something very sneering as well like obviously um ireland has had its own kind of like <laughs> celebrations mm. um there was a there was a football stadium where um there was a lizzie's group a yeah lizzie's in a box was chanted and one thing that i have noticed is there's been very little condemnation from that kind of a british press kind of group of people for those things in ireland but some characters have really went after, um, like women of color who've who've spoken about colonial, or like people of color in general. But specifically, a lot of women uh, of color, like what we saw Jeff Bezos do. Um, mm-hmm. You know, it was very much a like, oh, this is an opportunity to attack any anyone from the the global south or who has a family from the global south or from people who were from colonized countries. It's a it's a it's a good chance to to get a good kick in because we'll be able to parse it with oh we need to respect the the queen bearing in mind that you know the queen to to them and the queen to anyone from a you know a British colony is a very very different story. I mean one of the things that uh, I also saw was talking about how like you know obviously the queen was the queen throughout the apartheid in South Africa and still played a role there and honoured people who took part in it, you know, gave them, you know, whether it was, you know, CBEs or OBEs or any of the the mishmash of awards that the monarchy kind of gives out, um, there was still a lot of that throughout all of the kind of, you know, more, con- as you could actually say, maybe more contemporary colonial mm-hmm. history. Um, you know, like a lot of people are saying, you know, like it, people and this is maybe back to the mythology thing but like people always kind of betray the queen as almost like a remnant of a colonial past where she, you know she was actually head of the, the the monarchy that enabled it all um mm-hmm. for a, for a long for a long time now you could argue that the queen became more progressive um the, I, the, the the idea it's that, a fine know, line I've, see, I've seen all these things like oh she she decolonized so many things she did not take that step there were people being slaughtered to yeah. get that step it was done to preserve life it wasn't done out of any sort of oh well you know what as queen I'm going to do this because this is not the right thing it was literally this or war 
Yeah. It was literally people were, you know, they were gunning, you know, UK soldiers were getting massacred. And it was the concert, it was the, the more conservative thing to do was to pull out and say, okay, well, yes, we give you this back. It wasn't that she decolonized things. It was that these things were finally taken by force and she didn't have the, we didn't have the imperial power to hold on to it anymore. That's it. Because yeah. it, it pisses me off. I've seen so many people going, well, she wasn't an active colonizer. She was decolonizing. No, she wasn't. She did the PR to make it look as if we handed over power graciously. We did not. It was taken, as it rightfully should have been. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, I think, like, we'll, we'll see what happens in the weeks ahead. Um, I don't, I, I, you know, we'll get a good couple of weeks of this. Um, maybe we'll have a wee bit of a palate cleanser in the next episode. We'll talk about something else. Um, hopefully. hopefully, hopefully there's, okay, no historical events are allowed to happen over the course of the next week. It's just going to be chill vibes, okay? Um, but Joy, I'll let Five you... I'll let I'll, I'll, I'll let I'll let you wrap up this one. <laughs> if we have to manifest the chill vibes ourselves, we will. But anyway, yeah. thank you everyone for coming to the fourteenth episode of the I Sphere. Um, if you are joining us in chat, don't go away. We're still hanging around for a little bit of chatter for a wee while longer. But yes, if you are listening to this anywhere else, thank you for joining us. I hope you enjoyed what we were talking about, although it was quite heavy at times. Um, but yeah, thank you, and I will hopefully see you next week as well. See you later, folks. Bye bye. Bye bye.